Human beings are very social animals. We like to feel part of a community and we fear being on our own or missing out. So we pay close attention to what other people are doing. We sometimes like to mimic their actions. Behavioural scientists refer to this tendency as herd mentality. I'm at a dinner party right? and I can never remember whether I take the bread roll on the left or the right. And I really can't. I genuinely can never remember. So what I do is I wait till somebody else does it and I copy them. And essentially that's what herding is. In particularly in conditions of uncertainty, so when you know, we really don't know what's going on, rather than making decisions for ourselves, we will look around and try and find somebody who appears to know what they're doing and then we'll follow them. Herd behaviour is extremely common among investors. The financial markets are intrinsically risky, but we take comfort from doing what others are doing, particularly people like us. If I'm making a decision that makes me feel uncomfortable, I'm investing in something, it's, it's a risk, I'm uncomfortable taking the risk. One of the things that makes me feel more comfortable is that there are lots of other people running in the same direction. So we get comfort from following the herd. And of course, the more people that follow the herd, the bigger the herd gets, the more it gives us comfort. And so these things can be self-feeding and, and self-exacerbating. The problem when it comes to investing is that it doesn't matter who you are. People like you are probably doing a whole lot of very stupid things. So in investing, unfortunately, because we as humans are such innately poor decision makers, following other people is rarely a recipe for success. Um, we have to actually step away from the herd, try to find a way of looking in the other direction, be the contrarian, be the, be the, be the, the person who's willing to swim upstream. Another reason why herding is so prevalent is that it seems intuitively right. It can even feel foolhardy not to follow the crowd. If you were sitting in a movie theater and someone yelled fire and everyone started leaving the room, you probably wouldn't need to see the fire to get out of that room. That's herd mentality. In some ways we hate to follow the crowd, in other ways we know the crowd is smart. We know that if most people are responding to something, there's probably something that they're responding to. And so our minds will follow the herd when it seems appropriate. The trouble with herd mentality with investing is that the herd is following the herd. So when irrational exuberance gets started and people just start getting in on some trend and more and more people get excited about that trend, the herd is traveling in one direction. Then as soon as that direction tips and the trend, the bubble breaks, the herd leaves. If we follow the herd, then we're always behind. We're always going to be buying high and selling low. It's particularly in the run up to and the aftermath of market bubbles that herd mentality tends to manifest itself. A classic example was the tech bubble at the end of the 1990s. Herding was also greatly in evidence in 2009, after stock markets had fallen sharply as a result of the financial crisis. You know, if there was ever a time to get into the markets, it was then. And yet, every morning you opened the newspaper, there were scare stories about how it's all going to get worse, it's, and, and this was a, a feeding frenzy, media feeding on itself. And of course it made everyone else scared, and so no one was acting, no one was getting involved. There were a few people who bought shares at that point, but most people, even the ones who thought this has got to be a great time to invest, said, I'll just wait a little. And then they did, and they waited a little longer and a little longer. And so uh, it was really, uh, I think, at that time where every rational, dispassionate uh, rule of investing said, now is the time to put your wealth to work, and very few people did. In fact, many fund managers and institutional investors also got it badly wrong in 2009. Analysts' response to the Deepwater Horizon oil spill the following year is another example of herding by financial professionals. At the point it went down, the, the analysts who were forecasting BP resu BP's results had quite a wide range of, um, of different forecasts. The dispersion was quite high. When the rig went down, in, in the chaos and uncertainty that happened afterwards, um, what happened was all of the forecasts grouped together. So all of the analysts 
just had no idea what was actually going on. So they started basically looking at each other and trying to figure out what the forecasts were. And the forecast dispersion just went together, just grouped together. And it followed the BP price down. It never got ahead of it. It never predicted what the BP price was going to do. It followed it down. And then it missed the bottom as it bounced up again. Herding, in short, is part of our makeup. Resisting the temptation to join the stampede requires discipline and self-control. But if we can resist, we'll be far more likely to achieve our long-term investment goals.